Shiro Emiya. Well, Emiya. <laughs> and you're certain that your saber's master? Far from it. Hmm? Listen, all this stuff about masters and grail wars, I don't understand any of it. <laughs> yes, that is a problem. Very well. Seeing how this is the first time Rin ever asked for my help, I believe the least I can do for you, Shiro, is to oblige. Listen to me. Being a master is not something you can hand from one person to the next. And once you've become a master, you can't just walk away from it either. Those command seals on your hand are a stigmata. The role of master is a trial that has been awarded to you. You can't turn away simply because it's inconvenient. If you truly want to give up your status as master, your only option is to obtain the grail and make your wish. And what wish is that? It can be any wish that you desire. If you win the grail, you'll have the rare chance to have the contents of your soul wiped clean. In fact, if you wanted, you could even go back in time and start your life all over. So if you get the opportunity to make your wish, and it comes true, you'll be thanking your lucky stars you were chosen to be a master. If you want to rid yourself of those invisible burns, your only choice is to accept your stigmata. Kirei, would you please get to the point? I only brought him here so that you could explain the rules to him, okay? Guess I'll cut to the chase, then. Here are the underlying principles behind the Grail Wars. It's a series of battles to be fought by seven masters in conjunction with their servants. Participants in this war are not chosen simply because they wish to be. They are chosen as part of a ritual to determine who is the most worthy to possess the Holy Grail. You're kidding! You're talking about the actual Holy Grail? Trust me, when the Holy Grail materializes in this city, it will be the genuine article. The miracles performed by the servants should be proof enough that this is real. Servants are beings who approach the level of high spirits. They are either legends or historical figures who have been summoned forth by the Holy Grail and materialized here in physical form. In theory, they are to remain in spirit form and stay close to their master's side. They are to materialize and fight only when the need arises. Yes, but Emiya's servant is a bit different. Because her master is an amateur, she can't take spirit form. The Grail's ability to resurrect the dead could easily be considered magic. If the Holy Grail is capable of this power, it's safe to assume it can bestow equal or greater power to its beholder. In light of this, questions challenging its authenticity should be moot. All right, I'll assume for now that the Holy Grail exists. But why do you have to kill people over it? If it really has all this power, why don't you guys just share it then? A logical question to ask, but unfortunately, we don't have that choice. The Seven Masters are the ones the Grail feels are the most worthy to possess it, and it uses these wars to determine who is the most capable of all. Everything is carried out by the Grail itself. The selection of the masters, the summoning of the servants, all of it. This war is a tradition. It's a time-honored ritual where people chosen by the Grail die in an effort to attain it. But just because one person can win doesn't mean you gotta kill all the masters in the process! Wait a sec. There's no rule that says in order to attain the Grail you have to first eliminate all other masters. Huh? The Holy Grail is a spiritual object. A human can't even touch it. Only servants who are also spirits can have contact with it. So, servants are the key. Therefore, the objective is to eliminate all servants but your own. So I just gotta focus on the servants, right? Okay, it's starting to make sense. If my servant is the only one left at the end of the war, then no one can stop her from attaining the Grail. Exactly. So if you take out a servant, then there's no need to kill their master as well. Well then, how come you guys just didn't tell me that in the first place? So, just because you decide to fight in the Grail Wars, it doesn't actually mean that you're gonna end up dead. Let me ask you something. Do you think you have the ability to defeat your own servant? <clears throat> servants are quite powerful. It's hard for other servants to defeat them, much less an ordinary master. But servants can't exist without a master, which means... The easiest way to take out a servant is to take out their master. Yes, but a servant doesn't immediately disappear after they've lost their master. Another master can step in and use their command seals to form a new pact with them. A master who's lost their servant, and a servant who's lost their master, can create a new accord and rejoin the battle. Well, what happens if you use up your command seals? Wouldn't that set your servant free? And then they could go and make a pact with a different master. 
That's entirely plausible. If you use up your command seals, then you are relieved from your duties as master. Of course, if Amagus were actually to do this, he'd be forever branded an incompetent, or worse, an incredible fool. <sighs> but if that should happen to you, I'll personally guarantee your safety. That's my responsibility as supervisor of these wars, and I shall do my best to uphold my position. This is the fifth time that our fair city has played host to the Grail Wars. The last one was ten years ago. Are you people insane? You're telling me you guys have done this before? In the past, the Holy Grail Wars grew to become incredibly brutal. Masters were driven only by their desires, and they began to butcher one another indiscriminately. Because of that, the Council of Mages selected a supervisor at the very beginning of the Third War. That man happened to be my father. And so consequently, I have inherited the same post. Wow. It sounds like the Grail Wars have a way of bringing out the other side. Really? Well, yeah. I mean, the earlier masters were willing to break the rules of the Magi to get what they wanted, right? So imagine if someone like that won the Grail. Just think of what could happen if they got their wish. It would be nothing short of a huge disaster. Some maniac with that kind of power? It matters not what kind of person attains the grave. The Council of Mages will not interfere. Our only role is to make sure the rules of war continue to be followed. If you take issue with that, then become the victor. After all, relying on others can sometimes be incredibly inefficient. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do! I'm not interested in fighting this stupid war of yours! It's got absolutely nothing to do with me! So you're telling me you don't care, even if someone unfit to possess the Grail should be, knowing they could cause great harm to others? And you're saying none of these facts have piqued your interest about what happened ten years ago? As the last Grail War was coming to an end, the Grail was touched by someone who was unworthy. We have no idea what this master was hoping to achieve, but we are all familiar with the atrocity that emerged as a result of his actions. Yes. They say the cause of that fire is still unknown, but it's actually the scar left by the fourth Holy Grail. What's wrong? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm alright. So, what was the outcome of the last war? There wasn't. Like I said, the Grail was touched by someone unworthy of the war ended. But before him, there was another man who touched him. But you see, that man had done his best to avoid fighting, and so the Grail would not completely materialize. When all seven servants have gathered, the Grail will appear and then begin to materialize. But remember what I have just told you. This man chose not to fight, so the Grail refused to acknowledge him as its rightful owner. I'm afraid he's right. Therefore, any strategy that tries to avoid confrontations with masters is essentially pointless. This guy is you're talking about was you, right? About halfway through the battle, I quit. Unfortunately, I had lost my servant, so I came to my father and asked for protection. That's all I wish to say on that subject. Without a servant, a master is no longer qualified to win the grail. When the tournament reduces all seven of you down to just one, the grail will then reveal itself to the victor. I'll ask you again. This is your last chance, Shiro Emiya. Time to decide. Will you or will you not be a master in the Holy Grail Wars? I'll do it. If all this is true, if the Grail Wars did cause that fire ten years ago, then there's no way that I can just stand by and let that happen again. Well, that's settled. Okay, let's go then. Rejoice, my son. You have a chance to make your dreams come true. You need a distinguishable enemy to see your dream come to fruition. You may not want to admit it, my son, but in order for virtue to prevail, I'm afraid there must first be an evil that needs to be defeated. <coughs> for you, your most noble aspirations and your most despicable desires all flow from the same source. So please, stop pretending you don't know this. It's a conflict that's been going on within human beings for centuries. I've helped you as much as I can. You're a good person, Tosaka. Oh, please, don't flatter me. I don't respond to a 
Shiro. 